All right, hello and welcome to a Relevate Knowledge Transfer Deep Dive. Uh, I'm with Tracy Tully and we're going to talk about how to do video editing for YouTube. So we were talking a little bit earlier, the three distinct phases is recording the video, then editing the video, and then posting the, the video. So each one of those seems like an insurmountable mountain of work, but if you make your process really efficient, then you can easily... Uh, do the recording, do the editing, and then do the posting. So what I've just done, and mentally because I've, I've well practiced at this, but you might take a note to think about from start to finish what you're going to do with the recording and how it's going to work. So before I started the recording of this video, I got some tabs ready on my screen because I'm going to share screen. Mm -hmm. I thought I'm only going to do one take of the video. So even if there's mistakes or whatever, I know that I can just leave it running. So I'm not going to start, stop, start, stop, and then have 50 files that I have to try and line up and get right. If you stop, if you make a mistake, for example, I made a mistake in that sentence. If you make a mistake, you can just pause like I just did then and then restate that sentence. So I'll leave that in for editing, but you get the idea. Okay. So the recording of the video, obviously you want to just take a second to really test that you've got everything sorted. Could be your lighting, could be your sound, could be your camera. You want to make sure that by the time you get to the end of a recording that you don't then realize that you've just done a 40 minute or an hour long presentation with really bad lighting, really bad camera or really bad sound. So that's just a, a couple of pre-work points and I'd be very, it would be very wise to have a checklist that you go through in order to, to handle that. All right, so in this video, we're gonna go through, that was some high level points on just recording. So all we've done in this recording session is we're in Zoom. Now you can enter a Zoom room on your own or you can have other people, you can share screen. So it's about using simple tools. There are other alternatives that you can use, uh, but then you run into problems of getting, you know, this platform, spitting it out in the right format for the next thing and, you know, using the right amount of editing length time. And, and and so it's not about necessarily deep dive on which platform you should use. It's going to be more, here's a end-to-end -end easy way to get video out and to a reasonably good quality with minimal time and effort and energy. So any questions so far? No, all good. All good. All right. So that first preamble video part is probably what people are most familiar with. Like all we've done is open up a Zoom, go to the more settings, hit record on this computer. So obviously you need to figure out where that saves to. And as long as you can grab that file, that's the file you then edit. So I'm going to talk about a couple of things. In, in your case, we're going to be uh, doing videos on YouTube. So uh, I'm just going to quickly go to YouTube. So all I'm doing is sharing my screen here. All right, so we've got the, this is just the YouTube homepage. So a couple things to notice, and there's lots of videos on how to get good on YouTube, but the crux of it is in order to grab attention, you need to have a good thumbnail and you need to have a good title. Those two things are going to be the first thing that someone sees, but there's several ways that you can use the video. So one is that you're pushing the video out to an audience that doesn't know you. In that case, it's all about first impressions. It's like when you have a bestseller book, it's probably the cover and the title that's going to grab attention at the airport news agency stand, for example. So you can see this one, it's got big, clear words. Now, the other thing to think about is how this shows up. If, so, if I'm sitting on the couch, my thumbnail is only going to be very, very small. So I need to make very little on the thumbnail and really make it stand out. So a few major elements. A lot of detail can then get lost. So we can see there's this one here. This person is, I do a bit of networking with him. And the content that's there is a lot of text. It's a little bit small if you're going to watch it in the mobile view. This one next to it is quite big. It's colorful. It's, it's, there's a lot of contrast and it stands out. And it draws in intrigue with what's in the image. Okay. <clears throat> so... The other way that you would use, utilize the content from this, from YouTube might be for a direct close hold audience that you already know, for example, sharing a link, in which case most links can be shared by clicking the share or clicking the link when you're on the video itself. 
So just going into the YouTube studio for a second here. So this is where you go and edit and sorry, not edit. This is where you're posting your videos too. So in the studio is kind of the administrative background where you can see all of your content that you've uploaded. You can see analytics on its performance. You can go through and deal with comments. You can potentially monetize it as well. But let's just click into one at the moment and let's have a look. So I posted this one the other day. Now, a couple of points that we need to think about. And, and the reason why I want to cover them now is because when you're recording your video, have a think about what the, the thumbnail might look like. Have a think about the title that you might use. And remember that whatever you do, you're going to want to get a description out of it. And this is why I'm saying there's three large distinct parts of work. You have to do the video, which can be an effort in and of itself. There is the editing, which takes a bit of time. And then there is the posting. The posting is probably one of the most important parts because if you don't have the correct description, title, thumbnail, it's not going to get seen, it's not going to get noticed, it's not going to come up in search. So make sure you reserve some of your uh, video production energy for that. I think a lot of times people will do the, the video, the edit, and then they go, I'm done, I'm out of energy. But if you don't make it to the finish line, it's not going to perform. All right, so down here, you've also got, if you have similar videos, you can group them. And then the idea is that if someone watches one video, if they happen upon a, pl a playlist or it would recommend the next video, that to then watch the next one, the next one, the next one. And then further down, your tagging can help you get found as well. So we're not going to go too in-depth on any of those elements, but just the high points to think about from start to finish. Any questions about that? No, that's good. That's clear. Okay. So the big thing is once you've edited the video, sorry, once you've recorded the video, you've then got it in your files. So say for example, here, going to go to further down here to videos and you can see you've got the, the files. So wherever they save for you, you go and you grab that file. And then I'm using a platform called Descript. Now Descript is a video, video editing platform. And I will leave uh, my affiliate link to this in the description of this video. However, the platform does a couple of things and it really saves you a lot of time because one of the things that you need to do when you're doing a video is you need to practice. And sometimes you're going to have ums and ahs. You're going to have those in-between things that can take a lot of time to edit out if you, or, or even word gaps, or maybe you've said something. And, and like we mentioned before, if you made a mistake, you just pause you restate the sentence and the pause helps you see it in the timeline. You can see there's the timeline down here. If I zoom in on that timeline, we can see little gaps in words here. So if there's a long pause, then that's obvious in the editing. So you can go, all right, I know where I need to cut. If you just went back to the sentence very seamlessly and, and a little bit too fast, then you have to watch it in minute detail end to end to, to find that problem. Okay. So, what I've done is I've recorded a video and then I've uploaded the files. So I go into this files section. So I've already edited, had some done some work in here, but nonetheless, you can just go add files. And so I would just grab one of the video files that I had before, drag it onto here, or you just hit add files and then you can look it up in your file explorer. Then when you've got the video there, it'll go through another step. So let's perhaps start a new project to demonstrate. New. So one of the things that helps you to edit is having the transcript because then you can see the text and the content that is there. So if I grab that last video and I place it onto the script or in the other case was you upload it to that file section. In any case, what it's doing right now is it's transcribing so it's using AI to read or play the video to itself, extract the words, and then place what it thinks the words are onto that timeline that we saw just down here. So while that takes a moment to think, it'll also allow you to use the words to edit the content. And you'll notice this is more of a talking head where I'm sitting just in one spot. And the good thing is with a, with a talking head is if you make a mistake, Generally, you can edit that out, provided you've not got a lot of movement, and it'd be very unnoticeable. It might just appear as though it glitches or 
appear as though it is seamless, but most people are used to watching videos edited that way. So whilst that's loading, there's a couple of extra functions you've got here. So in that dropdown, you can shorten word gaps. However, sometimes it doesn't pick up every word. So I'd like to go through and do that manually. You can also remove filler words. So if I select that one, it's going to look for ums, ahs, and those sorts of things, and then you can remove them. This is only a short clip and there's not really any anything in there. You can see there's a break here, then there's some words, and then there's another break here, and then I restated it. So that's a perfect example of where I've made a mistake. Now I can do editing in a couple of ways. We can come down to the timeline here and I can click and drag those words and that's editing it, but in a non-destructive way. So if I edit too far, I can bring it back. So what I'm going to do in this section is I'm going to edit from the text. So I'm just going to highlight that sentence. Now I'm going to hit the backspace button. And now that's edited to the start of where I'm actually going to talk. So what I can then do is get that to start right on that first word. Not the best first frame, but that's okay. So if I hit play here. Why finally got monetized, but not in the way that I was expecting. Did you hear that? Yes. Yeah. So as you can see, I, I made a sentence and I didn't quite get my entire thought out. I had to stop and pause and think about it. But then what I did was I did my little pause and then I thought about my next line. So. Originally, I promised a halfway monetized and a fully monetized progress video. But so that was my next sentence. So I could do it sentence at a time. If I like, I can have a, my sheet of paper off to the side with dot points of what I'm going to talk about. You can say each thing sequentially down the list. And once you're happy that you've got everything, and this is why it's important to think about what you're actually going to produce in the recording so that when you're recording it, it makes it easier to edit later. So now all I have to do is drag this one to that one. So now when I play from about here, but not in the way that I was expecting. Originally, I promised a halfway monetized. So you can see it very seamlessly cut into the next sentence. And if you're watching it, you wouldn't think twice about it because it's pretty normal with uh, YouTube videos. So unless you're going to do a high-end video edit, then that's good enough. Now, what you can do is you can go one further and shorten word gaps down to by milliseconds. But it just depends on how you want the video. I prefer slightly more natural speaking style. But nonetheless, if you're trying to get high impact, very fast video, get everything out, then you can do that. Or if you need to, if you have a time bracket that you have to fit within, for example, when posting on LinkedIn, it has to be less than 10 minutes. If you're at 11 and a half minutes, you might be able to make up that, that difference and still get every word in by getting rid of those ums, ahs, word gaps, even if you're very succinct when you're speaking. So those micro gaps between words. Any questions on that so far? Uh, when you do, when you move that line, are you are putting your cursor at the top there where the, the print is? It doesn't matter anywhere along there, that line? I click on the words. So yeah. it does sort of matter because this is just sort of pushing down the timeline. Yeah. And there's little buttons over here. So there's like a little hand. So if I click on the hand, then I right. can click and then drag the timeline across. Oh. Now, now I can see my next gap. Yeah. If I need, I can use the blade and I can cut. So if I didn't like something that happened, I can go in and I can cut it. And then I can go to the pointer, click on that section and delete it. So there's a number of ways to edit, but the click and drag is probably the most easiest way. And what I would do is, you know, when you're reading through the script, give it a quick read through first because you can see these big gaps and I can just quickly on bulk backspace that out and it's gone and then i can get rid of that one and then the thing that i'm actually editing is a bit more like what i'm trying to end up with so the other good thing about this is it it's easier to read in a sentence like that if you have done let's just say you you've made a sentence and then maybe you made that sentence redundant with your next statement so people don't like around the beat around the path kind of way of speaking particularly in video where you know there's a good chance they're watching at one and a half times speed or 
you know, they're just clicking through to get the high notes. So if it's jumpy or if it's not in not, not direct language or if it's a bit slow, then they might click away. So it's good to make it short, punchy, and succinct. So you're not restating things in different ways. All right. So if I just edit a few more and we can go through here, let's get rid of this one. So you'll notice that this is only a part of a, a larger video, but most of what I did add another scene in here, but that's that's one minute of talking and I've tidied it up a relatively good bit. So here we go. In this video, I'm going to show you. And then I've got in this video, I'm going to show you. So obviously that's a redundant statement. So I can edit that one out and can get rid of it completely. Then what I would then do once I've gone through everything is I start it from the start and just play it through and watch it just to make sure that I haven't said anything or or maybe the word came out strange or, you know, sometimes you can rescue the script a little bit. Now, now that we've got that done, the next, you can go further and you can add media like images or sounds or, or whatever, but keeping it basic for this session, once you've done all of that, you can use this actions menu and then you ask AI and then it can give you a YouTube description. Now the description is generally very much looks like it's AI, but it's a great starting point. So once it's done reading the script and thinking about it, it'll give you the ter the title, it'll give you a bit of a description, and then it'll give you the timestamps. So then you can copy that to clipboard. Then you come up here and you go publish. So then I select this publish one. I then select where I'm going to publish to. So for me, it's YouTube. And then in this section, the default one it gives you, you just click on there, backspace it out and paste in the AI description that it just gave us. So all of that is there. So you can grab that one and use that as the title. So if I take that one there and I'll put it up here in the title and then I can remove it from the description here. Oh. Then I'll change... Sorry, did you have a question? No, 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 it's, it's good. It's making sense, yeah. So then uh, you can select the category. Half of this you can do on the other side. So I don't generally don't spend too much time. For me, I'm always in the how-to and style category. For the tags, of course, descriptors trying to market itself. But this one would be, I don't know, YouTube. doesn't really matter because once you move it over, so if we go private, then we go sign into YouTube. All right, so once you've edited that, so once you've logged in to the account, you can then click on publish and it will just take a moment, but in the background, it'll start publishing to YouTube. So it says your video is now being published to YouTube. will take a few minutes. So go and grab a copy. It takes a couple of minutes to, to, to push over onto YouTube, but you will get another notification. And then when you're over on YouTube, if you don't see it, you've just go back to your content list so all content and then just refresh. It could take like five minutes or so because it's a large file that's being moved. Nonetheless, you will get another notification saying this has been uploaded. So once you've created the video, so now we've talked about creating the video, editing the video. The last part is to publish the video. So we talked about thumbnail. We talked about description. Most of the description can be done from that AI component as as we demonstrated but once you're in the actual video it's still loading so i'll just go into this one here but you can come back because it's only going in as a draft so when you go back to the settings here so now it's now it's finished so if we go back to this content list and then hit refresh i'll just be taking time for youtube to process it in any case once that content comes in it comes in, it loads as a draft video. And so the visibility setting would be private mm -hmm. rather than public, which is, this is just a, a video that's been published already. Sometimes if you just publish it again, it does the job. I think I know what I did. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. picked the wrong channel. Yeah. Okay. So it's been published onto YouTube as a draft. And it's come through, it's still processing, but you can see the the length is correct. 
the thumbnail or the screenshot images are still coming through, but now we can start to see some of that appearing. If we scroll down, we see the visibility is private. We can see that our description came through from the uh, AI script. But as I mentioned before, it is AI. It's not that fantastic, but it is a great starting point. So where it says the creator narrates their unexpected journey. So I might change that to follow me and watch my... Follow me and watch my unexpected journey to YouTube monetization. So I've been able to customize it, make it a little bit more direct and human. Meanwhile, it's a great starting point and it gives you the timestamps. But as I scroll down through here, if you use a platform called Canva, you can produce some pretty nice image content. I've built a image here, which will be my thumbnail. So I upload that one. And then as I'm going through, I select a playlist. I then go and make sure I tell YouTube that it's not AI altered content. I then go through, select the relevant tags. So we will say YouTube monetized. Okay, enter. And then I might put a couple of other tags that are relevant. So it might be what someone might use to search to find your content. So Descript is the one, the default one that Descript is trying to advertise. So you can get rid of that one. You don't need it. It's not really relevant to uh, the video. Then you can go through it. You don't have to add these. Uh, I like to add a location just because I'm trying to be found locally. Leave everything as is. Generally, I like to keep it pretty available. So I don't block comments. Moderation is off. If it becomes a problem, I can change it. But by default, you want people commenting. You want people liking. So once you've done everything there, you also want to go and add an end screen, particularly to get them to look at the next video. So you can select what's the best one for the viewer and then add your um, add your subscribe button there. However, you might choose to give them one action. I do think that's a much more effective call to action rather than trying to get them to subscribe and watch the next video. You're probably better off just asking them to do one thing. You also down here choose the length of time that displays for. I generally keep it for the last few seconds because the problem with showing that video too early is that it gets someone to click away from your video, which you actually want them to watch more of the video and then watch the next video rather than have them leave early because they, they get the signal that it's starting to wrap up. They're going to start looking else anyway. anyway. All right. So that is posting the video. Once you've done that, you can do a couple of things. You can, on the visibility, either convert it to a public video, in which case, once you select that, done, and then hit save, it will then be available publicly. Or you can go unlisted, in which case you can then share that link. So if I copy that link to Clipboard, you can use that, for example, in an email or on your website or something like that. Or if you go to the final one, which is scheduled. So under scheduled, I could just schedule it forward. So I might do it tomorrow or next week sometime and then pick a time of day. You'll start to see a pattern when your audience is watching. You want to try get just before that. You also want to, if you do have content, try to keep it regular. So even if you sit down and record five videos in one session, have them drip out once a week. It helps keep your audience engaged without giving them too much or too little. Okay, so that is posting the video. Any questions about that? No, that's good. Okay. Thank you. So in this uh, session, we've gone through creating the video. Oh, I'll try that again. So in this session, we've gone through creating the video, editing the video, and posting the video. We can go in a lot more depth and detail into each of those components, but as a very high level, you should be able to, if you're recording on Zoom, editing in Descript, and then posting onto YouTube with, say, Canva for your thumbnail, be able to get the process done down to about an hour. So that's for about a 10-minute video. So obviously, you can spend a lot of time going very fancy with graphics and text on screen. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a talking head video that's fast and efficient and then 
finally published. So if if I'm already videoing on, I'm not videoing on Zoom, I'm videoing on a on big VU, so that will come in with its own text on it. Does that matter? If you've got the raw file, that text is kind of like a different layer. So yeah. you can put that video into Descript and it will create its own text for you. Or if you've already got the text, you could use that and upload it into YouTube if you wanted to have the captions show up down the bottom, for example. Yeah. I would still use Descript because you use, yes. it actually needs its own version of it so that you can use that for the editing. Yeah. So even if it comes with it, there's a good chance you can just shred it off and, and treat it as yeah. a raw video. Yep, can. Yeah, that's yeah. options there. Mm. Yep. Any other questions? Oh, yes. If you edit it and you remove a section, then you realise you made a mistake and you want to bring it back, can you? So if you've done it like just in that moment, yes, you can go Control-Z and that'll undo yep. Um, yep. or there's an undo button and it will bring that component back. So you're not completely stuck. It's it's what's yep. called non-destructive editing. So you right. can bring these things back. Right. Eh? And because it would then affect the the matching to the video, wouldn't it? Yes, you're kind of you're editing everything simultaneously, both the, the video, the text, the the audio. And by doing that, there are other layers you can put on later, such mm-hmm. as making those captions more graphical and have those pop up at different times. So there's a number of ways to go much further with that content. I, yeah. I know a lot of videographers that use that before they then go into their very fancy software. So they use that as a first level cut just to yeah. get rid of all of the junk. And then yeah. they start doing the fine cut and the fine edit and the transitions and all that sort of stuff. Mm, it's very good. Thank you very much. I'll have a go at that. Excellent. All right. Well, if you're uh, watching, thank you for watching. Take care. And uh, don't forget to give us a like, a subscribe, a thumbs up, put some comments down the bottom. There will be a link to the Descript in the bottom. And uh, don't forget to, hold on, I'll pause. We'll do that again. And don't forget to watch out for this next video.